Praise God. Come on, give the Lord one more hand. Amen. It's all right to bless the Lord. It's all right to praise God. That's what we're here for today in this house, to worship and praise the Lord. Grab your Bible this morning. Turn with us to the book of Mark, chapter number 5. Mark, chapter number 5. I took one of my Bibles. Somebody said it's dangerous when a preacher walks up with one Bible, much less two, to the pulpit. And I got two with me this morning. Hey, man, I just wanted to reference out of one of my Bibles. I, I looked up faith this morning. Let me share with you why you're turning to Mark chapter number 5. Here's what the definition in my Bible says. Huh, says of faith. It says reliance, loyalty, or complete trust in God. Somebody say amen. Reliance, re- loyalty, or complete trust in God. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter number 5. When you get there, will you stand with us this morning? as we read God's Word together, if you're able. Mark chapter number 5, either in your Bible or your tablet or cell phone, or it's on the screens. Look with us this morning as we look today at faith and miracles in God's precious Holy Word. Faith and miracles. How many of those God's not limited by our circumstances? How do we limit God then? Thank you for asking the question. (laughs) Here's the answer. By your unbelief. By your unbelief. Let me say that again. God's not limited by your circumstance. But He is limited by your unbelief. My mind. God is in the business of miracles. <laughs> Woo! He's in the, that, that's His business of miracles. How many of you believe that this morning? If the Bible said that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, you can't sell me the theology that the business of miracles from God is over with. I don't believe it. I will never believe it. I said, I'm a miracle. I weighed three pounds. Yesterday I turned 41 years old. 41 years ago I weighed three pounds when I was born. Doctors told my mom and daddy, said he won't be able to do a lot of things in his life. I said, who said? I've done everything in this life I've ever wanted to do. And if God tells that one thing's on my bucket list, and some of you think I'm going to be crazy when I say this, I'm going to jump out of an airplane, but it's going to be with a parachute on. Someone said, preacher, you crazy. I am. <laughs> Sister said, I'll see you on the ground. But I believe in miracles, folks. I believe it. Listen this morning. I want to preach on faith and miracles. And here's really the title, and we're going to read. When faith is all you have, faith is all you need. Look at with me. You're very familiar scripture here. Mark chapter number 5. Look at verse number 25 with me. 25. A certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came into the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. You see, sometimes our sister even said a minute ago, I feel better. This is what happened to this lady. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, Thou seest the multitude thrown in thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing but the woman fearing and trembling knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth and he said unto her daughter thy faith hath made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague this morning before you leave this building I pray you'll hear that from the Lord and you'll go in peace heavenly father Lord, I pray that you'll take this next few minutes and anoint it. Lord, anoint our mouth to speak. Anoint our ears to hear. 
what truly I believe the Holy Spirit wants to hear and say in this house. And we give you glory for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Come on, look at somebody and tell them you're glad to see them this morning in church. Praise God, praise God. I grabbed my other Bible this morning because it simply said this. I, I, my father-in-law got me a good commentary Bible the other day, and I turned to it, and it said, The passage relates the account of a desperate woman whose healing was the result of her great and persistent faith. Her illness made her ceremonially unclean and disqualified her from mixing with crowds of people Yet, she was certain that if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Somebody say amen. Now check this out. The commentary writer said Jesus did not rebuke her, but delayed his mission to the home of Jairus, whose daughter was dying in order to assure her of healing of salvation. Jesus later raised Jairus' daughter from dead. Of course, you know if you've read on in Scripture. But here... He took time to minister to one with positive faith. And to that I said, Amen. And to that I said, Amen. Let's cover some Scripture this morning. We love to cover God's Word. I believe in Scripture. I believe in God's Word. I believe if God said it, that settles it. Now, I'm going to do something that's different in my preaching this morning. Some of you know I'm very... I'm very uh, excited, I'm evangelistic, I'm charismatic with my preaching, I'm going to slow it down this morning. And I believe, folks, if I I, I can stand up here and with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I won't have to yell a word, I won't have to get over here and do cartwheels, jump around with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I believe this morning the Lord's going to allow me to do this. I believe you're going to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say about faith more than you've ever heard it before. I prayed for you that you'll hear more in your spirit than you've ever saw in the Lord to open your eyes, more than you've ever saw about faith. Let's cover it in Scripture. Mark chapter number 10 and verse number 27. Jesus looked at them and He said, With man this is impossible, but not with God. Somebody say hallelujah. But with God all things are possible. Then the Word of God said in Luke 18 and verse number 27, Jesus replied, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Then Mark chapter 9, verse number 23, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for the one who believes. Psalm 139, verse number 13 and 14, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I pray to you because I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Then Jeremiah 32 and 27. I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. And then he asked a question. Is there anything too hard for me? That was the question that Jesus asked those around him. Is there anything That is too hard for me. Let me stop there. We have some more scripture. I want to ask you this morning, is what you're going through or what your circumstance or what you will go through too hard for God? I said, amen. Come on. The Lord's going to help you faith right here. Is cancer too hard for God to heal? Is back problems too hard for God to heal? Is migraines too hard for God to heal? The Word of God said that Jesus bore every sin, every problem, everything I'll ever face. He bore it on His shoulders. He bore it on His back, on the way to Calvary. There is nothing that is too hard for God. Then Scripture says, Luke 9, verse number 16, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, He gave thanks and He broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples to distribute to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that was left over. Let me give you one more. Luke 1 and verse number 37 says, For no word from God will ever fail. Not one word from the Lord will ever fail. If God said it, 
that settles it, and I believe it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me give you the definition of a miracle. The definition of a miracle is this, an extraordinary event manifesting divine interpretate or intervention in human affairs. Let me say it again. An extraordinary event manifest, manifesting divine intervention in human affairs. Now, some of you this morning may find yourself at a place where you simply can't solve your own problem. You've tried everything. You've tried every doctor. You've tried everything else. You've had no success at it. Uh, through your struggle, you've failed to believe God can do it. Come on. I'm going to get all up there in your business this morning. Through all this stuff, some of you are sitting in this house. Now listen, some of you I'm talking to have been saved 30 years or more. Some of you are very young Christians and you're wondering, why God? I got a text this week, a messenger rather, on the phone. and It was from a very dear, dear person I love so very much. And they said, help me preacher, understand. When I ask God to do something, that person doesn't even live in this state. He said, why? Why hadn't God moved? Why didn't God answer a prayer of mine? Why? Just tell me the answer, preacher. Because I'm a young Christian and I'm struggling right now in my life. He's ever been there, you honest. I asked God to move and He didn't move. And I sent him back a long reply. I won't reply that long to you this morning. Some of you have asked the question, why hasn't God moved? Well, I can say this, I don't know. Well, gee, thanks, preacher. But I can say this, with everything that's within me this morning, I'm not worrying about why he hadn't moved yet as much as I am holding on to him with everything I've got. Some of you grab hold of that this morning because if we let the wise get in our mind, it'll kill our spirit. Oh, why, God, and we'll shake our fist at Him, and we'll, I'm not even going to church anymore. I'm not going to read my Bible anymore. I'm not going to worship. I just give up, Lord, because you didn't move. The Bible said that God's ways are higher than our ways. All I can know is I can see old brother Job looking up to heaven after he lost every kid he had uh, and every farm property he's ever had and every home. Uh, and I'm sure Job said, why, God? Uh, why, Lord? Uh, but the Bible said that old Mr. Job, old brother Job, uh, bowed his knees, uh, got a hold of, of the Lord, and, and he, give, he, he spilled out his guts to Jesus. The Bible said he covered himself in sackcloth and ashes. They did that when they prayed and as he covered himself, uh, his wife, I don't, she didn't mean any harm. We often give his wife a lot of problems. She was tired of seeing his suffering, folks. Uh, she was thinking, oh, go ahead to heaven, brother. Go ahead, husband. Go ahead. Uh, and he said, no, I can't cuss God and die. I, I will bless the Lord through my storm uh, because I know there's got to be something he's going to bless me with bigger than what I can see right now. But I know, come on, some of you can't understand why you're going through some things. When faith is all you have, faith is all you need this morning. Oh, I can't see it, preacher. I can't give you the answer why God hasn't moved. But I can give you my answer through God's Word this morning that I'm going to trust Him, that He knows what He's doing. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to think for a moment about all the miracles Jesus has performed in the gospel up to this miracle that we read in our text. Here it is. He turned water into wine. He healed the noble man's son. He cast out demons. He healed Peter's mother-in-law. He healed many sick in the city. He cleansed a leper. He healed a centurion servant. He healed a paralyzed man. He healed a man with a withered hand. He raised the widow's son. He calmed the raging storm. He cast out demons and put them in a herd of pigs. <laughs> Miracles. Let me say this this morning. People get skeptical when you say that word. Even Christians sometimes roll their eyes 
when you talk about miracles. I'm being real this morning. We fail to realize that miracles still happen today just as they did in the day of Jesus. It's one thing for an unbeliever to be skeptical about a miracle. But let me say this, if you're saved this morning by the precious blood of Jesus, don't give up on the Lord. Don't give up on Jesus this morning. Don't you give up on the Lord. Somebody say amen. God's going to help you today. Let me go back to the first miracle that Jesus, it was actually the very first miracle of Jesus. It was at a wedding, Cana of Galilee in John chapter 2. And the cisterns at that time, the vessels held, history shows us anywhere from about 20 to 30 gallons of water. And the Bible said that Jesus and the disciples and his mother was at a wedding. And it said there were so many people there that the, that the guest had drunk all the, all, uh, all the beverages, all the wine. And the mother of Jesus walked up to him and said, Brother, you got to move. <laughs> These people are they thirsty. Matter of fact, it was you let the drink run out at a wedding, you got a bad report. It was a disgrace for this to happen. Jesus said, Woman, my time's not yet come. But he looked at it and he said, Go fill the vessels up with water. There's going to be a miracle today. So Jesus, as they filled the vessels up with water, listen to this, this morning it's the first miracle, this is why I can believe in miracles. The first miracle was He turned the water into wine. Now understand the miracle's not in the water, the miracle's not in the drink, the miracle's in Jesus. We oftentimes look for the miracle to happen in so and so and so and so, but the miracle is in Jesus. And so Jesus told them to pour the water and all of a sudden they went to get in the water and, and then wines. And here's what they said. Not only was a miracle happened because there was none. There was none. It all run out. But there's good wine. Matter of fact, it's better and they said, oh Lord, look what happened. We, we've saved the best for last. You see, the miracle's not in the water. Some people look at all kind of stuff as miracles. But Jesus said, just pour. Listen this morning, folks. When you ain't got a thing inside of your life, when you've got nothing left and your soul is empty, you can look to God. And He can fill you with His love, His grace, and His mercy. Matter of fact, when you're looking for a miracle, and I'm going to get to this in just a moment, when you're looking for a miracle, you better look to God. And when you're feeling empty, the best thing the Lord can do before He performs a miracle is He can fill you back up with His love and fill you back up with His grace and fill you back up with His mercy and put His love and arms around you. Keep on pouring. And the Lord just says, Hey, there's plenty more vessels. You just keep on pouring. And when you think you've run out, you just keep on pouring, 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 keep on pouring. Oh, the miracle's not in the cup this morning. How many knows the miracle's in Jesus? The miracle's not in the cup. The miracle's not in the vessel. The miracle's in Jesus. All oh, the people looked and they said, Oh, that's the best. He saved the best for the last. It's not in the cup. We say, oh, oh, my back has been healed. But yet, listen, we oftentimes forget about it once the Lord's moved. We forget the blessing. And just keep on pouring. And all the vessels are filled up. Oh, there's nothing more. Nothing left, preacher. I'm empty. I'm down to nothing. When you're down to nothing, God's up to something. When you're down to nothing, God's up to something. Just keep on pouring. Oh, some of y'all wondering, said, how in the world is he doing that? I ain't going to tell you. You 
You're just looking for a miracle this morning. You need Jesus, in essence, to turn some water into wine for you. You, you need a miracle this morning. You need, a, you need a miracle from God. David didn't kill the giant by talking to God about how good he can sling a rock. So what did he do? Nowhere in the Bible does it say, and David shall get a rock and go kill the giant. He had to get up and he had to move. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, Noah built an ark by sleeping in and looking outside the tent wondering if the angels had pitched in. But here's what the Bible did say. The Bible said, He moved by faith. Hebrews 11 says, By faith being warned of God of things not, not seen as yet, moved with fear. How? By faith. The walls of Jericho only fell because there was a demonstration of faith. The muddy Jordan River, it didn't roll back until the priests got their feet in the mud. There had to be an operation of faith or none of these things are going to happen. Peter needed some tax money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God didn't move until faith moved. I want you to get people all over. Listen to this this morning. They sitting around wishing God would move. Let me tell you, you move. Peter needed some tax money. Jesus said, get your fishing pole, son, and go fishing. You're going to catch a fish. And when you catch that fish, there's going to be some money in that fish's mouth. Reach down in that fish's mouth and get the money the Bible didn't say, Behold, the IRS man comes. Go, go get people to give you some money. Jesus said, Son, get your fishing pole and go fishing. This morning, the Lord, I believe, is telling you, you've got to move. You've got to move. It may be toward an altar. It may be something in your heart. There may be a spiritual blockage there. But you've got to move by faith. I can't see it yet. That's all right. By faith, I can see it. Oh, my, 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 my. Somebody said it like this. Faith is like Wi-Fi. It's invisible, but it has the power to connect you to what you need. And to that I said, Amen. The Bible said in Malachi 3, 6, I am the Lord, I change not. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, I'm not talking about positive thinking this morning. I'm not speaking mind over matter. I'm just reminding you of the eternal Word of God and what God's Word says. The Bible said in Matthew 24, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Word will never pass away. His Word in Psalm 119 and 89, the Bible said His Word is forever settled in heaven. Now let me quickly, quickly, because we're going to pray. Somebody asked this question, said, Preacher, what do I do while I wait on my miracle? What do I do? I'm going to give you four takeaways this morning. Number one, and I'm going to give you the hardest first. And when you hear what I'm fixing to say, I believe you'll agree with me. What do I do while I'm waiting on a miracle? Number one, I worship Jesus Christ. How I many knows that's the hardest to do? When God's not moving. Let me, let me tell you. Crystal told these kids the other night. Something I need to speak to us this morning. Most of us have saw the little cartoons. Of genie in a bottle. God's not a genie in a bottle. You, 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 can't, you can't conjure him up. And rub him up. He's not some genie in a bottle. But he is God Almighty. He is my Father. The Bible said He's my friend. And I'm going to worship Him. Somebody say Amen. There is only one healer. There's only one miracle worker, and that's Jesus Christ. When I say healing, it's meant to cover whatever you need today. The Bible said that He alone is a great physician. And we must worship Him. Now, we're going to worship and we're going to seek the healer and not the, he or the healing. 
Matthew 8, 2 and 3. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be out thou clean. <laughs> and immediately, the Bible said, the leopard man's hand was cleansed. Immediately. Those who seek only a healing or a miracle without worshiping God are going to be greatly disappointed. Oh, some of y'all didn't hear me. I said, those who seek a miracle or seek a miracle or a healing without worshiping God will be greatly disappointed. Oh, my, my, you must worship the Lord. I remember the Canaanite woman, she worshiped Jesus and Jesus healed her daughter. And that's Matthew 15. Then Matthew 28, the Bible states, and as they went and tell the as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hell, and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. God hears the prayers to those who worship him. Number two, you must humble yourself. How I many knows pride's a gigantic hindrance to receiving your miracle? Second Kings five, nine through fourteen. For sake of time, I won't read the full story. Go there and read it. It's the story of Naaman. Naaman, he came with his horses and chariots, the Word of God said. He was a high man. And Elijah sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and, and you'll be clean. Now this really upset Naaman. Because this is a dirty place. Jordan wasn't a clean place. And he thought it should be in some, some pretty place, some paradise. Maybe, maybe Jesus could take him to, to one of the pools in town. But Naaman is not going to get his healing until he obeys the Word of God. And he tried to go without it, but there's nothing to avail. But once he took hold of what Jesus said, and the Bible said he went and dipped seven times in that Jordan. Listen to this this morning. When he went and dipped, he came up and he was healed. So, this morning, get pride out of your way. Somebody say amen. Mm. Bible said he came. Bible said that, that seventh time he come up. Listen to this, the last verse in verse number 14. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Many people think that they'll receive something from God because who they are or what they think. It's not going to happen. Number three, believe in God's Word and the integrity of God to keep His promises. This is very hard because we believe God's Word when it's good for us, and when it's not good for us, we don't believe it. And we say, but you said, Lord. Believe that God's Word is absolute true, and that it will never pass away, and the church said, Amen. Matthew 24, that's the Scripture. Then number four, take God at His Word. Jesus asked the blind men, how many, how many knows God will perform what He spoke? Jesus asked the blind men, He said, do you believe I'm able to heal you? Do you believe I'm able to heal you? How many believe this morning that God's able to move on your behalf? Raise your hand. You believe. The Bible said Romans 10 and 17, because you've answered that. So then faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Jesus asked the two blind men, He said, Believest thou that I am able to do this? What? Do what? Heal them. And they answered, Yea, Lord. Yes, Lord. We believe, Jesus said unto them, According to your faith, you're healed. So whatever level of faith you had, according to your faith, you're healed. How I many knows the Bible is God's Word? We've got to take Him at His Word. Someone please come to this instrument, please. We're fixing to pray. Could one of you please, Zach, would you please go get our children's church, please? Let's get back to our text this morning. When faith is all you have, faith is all you need. Personal faith will get you or will get from God that for which it believes. It's an unfailing law. 
I want to mention four things in the sum of a minute and a half of what this lady did. Number one, this lady that had a disease, the issue of blood, had spent, the Bible said, everything that she has. Retirement's gone. Money's gone. Savings gone. And so all she has now is to run to Jesus. And the Bible said that she heard. I want to convey this morning, you've heard the Word of God today. You've heard in your Bible how they come out with a high hand. You've heard in your Bible how they march through the dry land. You've heard that He's your healer, that He's your Savior, that He's your friend that sticks closer than a brother. You've heard that His banner over you is love. You've heard that He's a holy God. You've heard... I've heard this morning how he's made the lame to walk and the blind to see. So she heard. But I've got to do more than hear. The Bible said she went. You've got to get where Jesus is. I know he's everywhere. Think about this with me this morning. There's no song. Woo! We used to sing it in church when I was growing up. You gotta move. You gotta move. I remember that old song. You gotta move. You gotta move when the Lord gets ready. You gotta move. Man, what a song. She went. I know people that have fought through some things in their life literally had to fight through them to get to Jesus. But she went. And God moved on your behalf. Some of you this morning. Let me tell you, it may have been hard to already get out of a pew and pray like we prayed this morning, but you heard and you went. And then number three, the Bible said that she touched. Now most won't see. Listen to this. Or most want to see, few want to touch. Most want to see, few actually want to touch. And the Bible said this lady touched the hem of his garment. Stand to your feet this morning. How many knows there's something wonderful about the touch of Jesus? Will our kids, church, please come down and I want you to stand across this front, please. Just one touch is all it takes for a healing. All it takes for deliverance and all it takes for victory and on and on and on in your life. So she heard, she went, she touched. There's an old song that I do often. I love this song. Here it is. Touching Jesus is all that matters. Come on, find that key for me. Where are we at? I want to sing it this morning. I want you to sing it with me. Oh, touching Jesus is all that matters then your life will never be the same oh there is only one way to touch oh you must believe when you call on His name. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Oh, touching Jesus is all that matters. Then your life will never be the same. Oh, there is only one way to touch Oh, you must believe when you call on His name. She heard, she went, she touched, and she felt. What did she feel? She felt the healing virtue flow. She felt the healing virtue flow. As I was sharing this with my father-in-law yesterday afternoon, he called me back this morning, and he said, hey, if the Lord impresses you, he said, 
put one more in there. I, he's, he's a preacher. We always preach to each other. He said, tell them this. And I thought, how good. She confessed. We often put Martha and Mary, we often put them at the tomb being the first one to tell people about Jesus. The first talking about Him, about what happened. This lady was actually the first one. She was the first preacher woman. She confessed to people about what the Lord had done. Aren't you glad of that this morning? Come on, bow your heads all over the building today. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, if we've already prayed for you this morning, I want you to step this way with these kids, please. Heavenly Father, all over this building this morning, we felt faith being increased. Lord, some people have no doubt walked in this building this morning needing a miracle. They need God to move. They need their faith to be increased today. Lord, they need your touch. So right now, Jesus, we're asking that you do something that we can't do. We've prayed for the anointing of the Holy Spirit now, Father. We pray your will be done. Let miracles happen even right now. Lord, let prayers be answered. Right now is our prayer. And Father, for that we thank you and we give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. If you're standing in need this morning, you need a miracle or you need your faith to be increased, I want you to come stand right here. You're praying for you or you're praying for somebody, I want you to come stand right here. Praise God. Praise God. Come on. For those of you we done prayed, turn around and face them. If you're still standing in, that's all right. Come on, any, anybody else? Sister Mildred's coming. Hey, you, if she can't stand, you can set her right there on that first pew right here. We're going to do something very special now as they've come by faith this morning. We're going to believe in what they're praying for to be done in Jesus' name. Now here's what the important part is for you guys this morning. Your job is to simply pray the best.